And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. It is really good sometimes to pause for a while and ask ourselves, what is that gives us joy, real, deep joy? There are plenty of things in our life that give us pleasure and satisfaction. Time spent with good friends, going on a holiday, having a good meal, a lovely walk, playing with our dog. These are good things. We need them. They are an essential part of what it is to be a flourishing human being. There is, though, something that can give us an even deeper joy than these pleasures. There's a word for this deeper level of joy, quite a beautiful one, a word I really love, a word that opens a new dimension just by being uttered, and the word is delight, delight. Of course, this word too can be trivialized by talking of a delightful evening or delightful weather. Why not? But in its proper sense, delight is found in things we have done so well that they bring about something uniquely beautiful, uniquely new, full of meaning, fulfilling. You see delight in the eyes of parents when they hold their newborn for the first time or look at her when she is sleeping or on the podium when she graduates. I saw delight in the eyes of our choristers at the end of the Alleluia during the last performance of Handel's Messiah in this church last December. If you missed it, watch it for yourself on the YouTube channel. It's quite something, I promise. If you are a priest, there is delight when a word or an advice you give to someone brings them comfort, relieves them from the burden of guilt. There is delight whenever you see that the help you have given to someone has changed their lives. In a word, there is delight whenever you have given it all and you see that something truly special has come out of it. Delight, though, is not a reward. It's not exactly a reward. Delight is there even before the audience applauds. We feel delight whether or not the person we helped is able to acknowledge it then or later or ever. A parent delights in his or her child often without the child being aware of it. The real reason for authentic delight is that we know, we feel deep in our bones that something we have done or been instrumental in bringing about or contributed in creating is simply, exquisitely, unmistakably good. It is good. Yes, it is the good that delights us because anything authentically good always is a miracle. Undoubtedly, the upbringing of a child, the performance of a musical piece, the help we give to others require work, dedication, expertise, perseverance. But whether or not all this actually yields a result which is truly good is never guaranteed, and this is why when this happens, it gives us such delight. Now, in this, God is exactly like us. Or maybe we should say, in this, we are exactly like God. This is what we see 
in the account of creation in Genesis we have just heard. In the beginning, there was a formless void and darkness. In the end, there is light, water, sky, earth, two great lights to rule the day and the night, stars, plants yielding seeds of every kind, swarms of living creatures, wild animals, and flying birds. In the end, we are there too. And everything, everything God has created is entrusted to us, given to us as a gift about each and every one of these marvelous things God has brought about, out of nothing, he says, I give it to you. And there is when we see it, to crown the story, God's delight. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. In God's case, though, we discover that delight has another aspect besides the realization that what he has done is good. We are told that at that moment, God rested. God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. Delight authorizes us to rest. The good which is now firmly established in its own trajectory can take care of itself. We can relax. We only need to wait. Here, though, we need to probe deeper. We need to understand what is this good in which God finds the light. And even more, ask why is rest connected to authentic delight. We need to do this because this might, might help us to meditate on this most puzzling aspect of our faith, which we call the Trinity, the Trinity. We are not told that Adam and Eve thanked God for his gift. Surely they needed time to take it in. After all, they had just woken up, so to speak. What was then the good in which God found delight? Well, quite simply, the gift itself, the gift itself. Because there is no greater good, no deepest delight than what we find in giving it all, giving ourselves all. As Paul says, remember Paul says in Acts, remember the words of the Lord Jesus. Then he said, there is greater happiness. We can translate, there is greater delight in giving than in receiving. But then, what about the rest? What does it tell us about who God is? <coughs> when you look at the tyrants and the dictators of this world, the Putins, the Kim Jong-uns, the Bashar al-Assads, there is one thing they never do, one thing they cannot do, and this is rest. And the reason for this is that they hold on to their power. They do not want to share it with anyone else. They cannot give away one single ounce of it because the moment they do so, everything crumbles under their feet. They are restless. God, on the contrary, can delight and can rest because he has nothing to fear, nothing he holds on to. What did he do with all he had created, all he had done, all the leverage? He had on us. He gave it to us. God said, see, I have given you every plant, every living being, everything you see. More than that, he made us like him. Let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness. And here it comes. Let them have dominion. Let them have, let them have the power over everything. What was his 
the dominion over everything, he gave it to us. And he kept expanding this gift. Eventually, he gave himself in a power by dying on the cross. He gave us all his secrets by pouring the Holy Spirit in our heart. In the face of our suspicions about how powerful our God is, we learn that he is someone who delights in giving and he gives so thoroughly, so authentically, that he can rest. And by marveling at how authentic and unimaginable his gift of himself is, slowly, with time, we understand something of who God is. Because indeed, God is not just a divinity that gives gifts, but he is gift. He is not a jealous, self-centered, all-powerful monad. Quite the opposite. God gives because he is gift. Even before the creation of the world, God was gift. Even before he could give himself to us, there was giving and receiving in his life. So, let us retain one thing from all this. Believing in the Trinity is simply a way of preventing our projections to spoil our perception of God. As long as we think of a God who is one, alone, who holds the whole power, then we are right to be afraid of him. The only way of trusting God is understanding that he does not hold on to power, but he empowers. That he does not just give us something, but himself. And that he gives himself because he is gift. He is giving and receiving. He is Trinity. And because we are created in God's image, if we want to know the Trinity, we do not need to look any further than to our own experience of delight. Whenever delight appears in our lives, it teaches us a unique lesson. That good exists. That indeed it is a miracle, but that there is a lot we can do to create the conditions for it to happen. And that whenever it does happen, in the rest it affords us, we have a glimpse of what we are meant to be, of what being in the image of God means for us, and of who our God really is, simply, unreservedly, unapologetically gift. In the name of the Father, of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.